I was able to revive my Raspberry Pi. Right? Kasi we're, we're dealing with the process abstraction and uh, I'm using, we're using here Linux and in particular Ubuntu Linux distribution. Okay? And uh, you know already that a particular uh, Linux distribution uses the Linux kernel. Right? I'd just like to clarify that sometimes when you refer to an operating system, you refer to, the, to everything that comes with the operating system. Like Ubuntu is treated as an operating system. Right? Windows is treated as an operating system. Raspbian is treated as an operating system. But uh, we should also have a distinction between uh, the operating itself and the surrounding software or the ecosystem and the kernel, which is the program that is running, uh, always running in the memory uh, or part of the operating system. Always running. So this example, I am using Ubuntu Linux, and this is the Linux kernel. So when we when we think about Linux, we only refer to the Linux kernel. That's what you mean by that. Now uh, I have uh, the machine. Uh, so I think I was not able to set up the SSH server. So maybe I'll show you next time that with the process abstraction, the Linux kernel can run on an x86-64 architecture on an, or an ARM processor. Okay, so that's uh, one thing to remember because of the process abstraction. Okay? So we're going to continue uh, uh, with this chapter, which is uh, a CPU uh, uh, virtualization. Okay? So time sharing, so you have performance. Why do we need performance? Uh, in the board you have here, on the board you have uh, three processes, the OS kernel, process one, process two. They are in the memory. Once they are here, they are already in the memory. And this is the CPU. We only have one CPU more. Right? This is process, uh, uh, program uh, pro three. Pro pa lang siya kasi nasa, ano pa siya, nasa, Nasa disk pa siya. Ito, that's a very clear memory. So, basically, you have three components in a, a computer system. Uh, the storage, the memory, and the processor. Okay. So, the idea here is uh, we have these programs already a process in the memory. And remember that the OS card is the GAT process. Right? So, it also has to uh, have uh, access to the CPU to be, ex to be able to execute its instructions. Okay. So we need to consider uh, performance. How, uh, how can we uh, make sure that we are able to execute all of these processes uh, efficiently even we only have, if we only have one processor, one CPU? Okay. And then the other question, the other concern is uh, how can we run processes efficiently while uh, retaining control over the CPU? The OS kernel should be able to control the use of the CPU. Okay? Linux kernel, for example, should always have control of the CPU because it is the OS kernel which is responsible for basically loading these processes programs. So essentially, uh, in the on the disk, okay, Nandun pa rin si program 1, program 2, program 3. Pag niload lang siya, saka lang magkakaroon dun siya. So, pag nag-LS ka sa file system, yung prog 2, prog, prog 1, prog 3, nandun siya sa directory. Pero, ang naglimbawa, nag-run lang tayo ng process na P1 si P2, so, sila lang yun na sa memory. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa natin niloload si prog 3. Uh, I hope you get that idea na. Okay. So, one of the techniques uh, of allowing, okay, so one of the techniques of uh, allowing uh, control, okay, is by uh, basically providing uh, direct execution of the processes. So remember, the processes have their own instruction. Parang idea dito is, why don't you just, why don't you just let P1 run uh, on its entirety in the in the machine. Okay. P2, hayaan mo siya, parang uh, 
Hintayin mo na lang na matapos. Okay? So, yun yung parang sistema para uh, magkaroon ng uh, kumbaga, uh, management. Okay? So, ang tawag doon ay direct execution. May program ka, you have a set of instructions, you just place them to the CPU. When you say place them to the CPU, pa paano ba natin sinasabi na hayaan natin na yung program mag-execute? Paano natin sinasabi yun? We simply use the jump instruction. Okay? So, di ba may mga instructions sa memory? Yung jump instruction, i-point mo lang siya dun sa address ng instruction ng process na gusto mong i-execute. Okay? So, yun yung you can use jump or call. Now, this is a, a time timing diagram okay, on how a program uh, should be executed by the CPU. Right? This is the typical setup. Right? So let's say, uh, <coughs> let's try prog3. Prog okay? So prog3 is not in the memory. Right? It's not in the memory. So uh, let's call it the process list. Uh, we try to separate the OS processes, which is the kernel process, and the user processes. Call this the user processes. So, in the direct execution method, <coughs> you create an entry for the process list. So, we're trying to execute prog3. So, we create an entry to the process list. Okay, so, prog3. Okay. So, sabi natin na uh, when we create an entry, uh, si P2 nag-fork siya tapos ito yung laman niya okay? and then you allocate the memory for the program that's number 2 so basically you create an entry in the process list you allocate memory for the program and then you load the program to the memory ano yung system call para i-load to dun sa memory? exec, di ba? so yun yung mangyayari alay sa exec and then you set up the stack with RC and RB. So, meron tong stack. So, di ba yung process memory, meron yung code, uh, code, data, uh, heap, stack, all those stuff. Okay. And then, clear the register, and then call the main function. Okay. So, basically, uh, that's what happens after the exec. So, the load, di ba, L, L64 yung file format ng executable, okay? Ilo-load yan sa memory, babasahin yan, may mga sections at ilalagay dyan, and then uh, the exec system call will call the main function, okay? So, what happens is the program, okay, pag kinol na yung main function, P3 will now uh, execute on the CPU. Okay. So, dito, uh, bago mangyari ito, okay. so sabi natin system call yung, ano, yung exec VE, di ba? So, si OS, ibig sabihin, currently, habang ginagawa ito, okay, habang ginagawa ito 1 to 6, si OS kernel ang nandun sa CPU. You get that? Sa so, yun nandun sa CPU. Pero, after ng call to main, mawawala na siya sa, isa na yung CPU natin eh, mawawala na sa CPU, si P3 na ngayon ang nandito. You get the idea? You get the idea? Okay? And then, may gagawin si main, di ba? Tapos si main, pag nag-return na siya, anong mangyayari kay main? Matatapos na siya, and then, uh, actually, you return or exit, babalik na ulit sa OS yung CPU. You get the idea? So at the start of the operate, at the start of the operation of the computer, as you did in the exercise in the bootloader exercise, okay? Bootloader and then you load the kernel and then the kernel the accept commands, etc. It's a very basic kernel. And at that point, if you have the loop, it's the kernel that is running, okay? So this is the basic idea of uh, uh, and after returning from the from the process, natanggalin do yung memory, and then the state is as it was. Okay, you get the idea? So that's what we mean. So 
the problem is without limits on the running programs, the OS wouldn't be in control of anything and this would just be a library, right? So it's very important, I always emphasize this, that the kernel is, should be running at all times on the CPU. So yung nagko-control ng lahat ng mga. Okay? So, the question now is, the question now is, what if, uh, what if, ito yung direct execution, no? So let's go, let's, let's revive that process again, okay? The problem is, Di ba nagdaran si ano si P3 dito? Ito yung direct execution, no? What if si P3 nag misbehave? Meaning, nag infinite loop siya. Nung nag infinite loop siya, hindi siya makakarating sa return, di ba? Hindi siya makakarating sa return. Kung hindi siya makakarating sa return, nag iikot, nag loop lang siya diyan. Siya lang yung may parang may jump dollar ka dito. Lang, may jump dollar dito. Ano mangyayari? Wala na. Hindi na, mag, hindi na makakabalik yung control sa OS, di ba? So, hindi ka na makakapag-create ng bagong process, etc. You get the point? So, how do we address that? How do we address that? So, there are, uh, there are actually uh, two options, okay? Okay? So, uh, there are two issues that must be addressed actually. Okay? So, the first one is uh, ensuring control. How do we ensure na makakabalik yung control da dun sa operating system? Okay? So, uh, if we allow direct, also, if we allow direct execution, no, itong process na to, okay? pwede ang mangyari, pwede niyang uh, without any form of control, si P3, pwede niyang basahin directly yung, ano, yung disk. Okay? Pwede niyang basahin directly yung disk. Okay? Without going to the operating system. However, remember that the, the storage is shared among different process. So, pwede basahin niya yun basta-basta. Uh, as you did in the good loader exercise, you read the sector 2 to load the kernel. Okay? So, kung baga, very privileged yung operation and we don't want that to happen, okay? And, as a while, as a while ago, it might uh, have the resources <laughs> and kung baga, mag-hang siya dun dito, okay? So, the solution is basically uh, to introduce yung tinatawag na uh, protection uh, modes, okay? Or use uh, modes, uh, operation modes, okay? And these operations, operation modes should be supported by both the hardware and the software, right? So, para ano nangyayari, si OS kernel, meron siyang tinatawag na kernel mode na pwede niyang galawin lahat, pati yung mga storage and other I.O. I.O. devices, like I.O. Nandito din, say, network card, uh, uh, video card, pwede niyang galawin yun. Ito yung kernel mode. And the other, others will be running in uh, user mode. So, parang may dalawang separation. Okay? Parang ang gusto mangyari, itong mga process na to, kailangan wala siyang direct access sa mga to. Okay? Ang meron lang direct access sa mga to ay si kernel. Okay? You get the idea? So, how is that ensured? Okay. So actually, uh, at the hardware level, meron tinatawag na protection rings. Okay. So remember na, in order to accomplish that uh, limited execution, the hardware must also support that. Kasi yung instructions mo, ine-execute ng hardware, di ba? Tama ba? Okay. So, kailangan supported ng hardware yon. So, sa x86, merong, ano, merong uh, I think, four protection levels. Sa x86, no? Uh, okay. So, ang mangyayari is, yung pag-execute ng, ng specific instruction is determined kung nasa ang protection level ka or nasa ang mode ka. 
Okay? If you are running in kernel mode, this is actually ring zero, okay? May access ka sa mga privilege instructions, okay? Pero pag ordinary ka lang, yung instruction ba ay execute sa lower privilege, say privilege level 4, or user level, user mode, hindi ka pwede kumaccess ng directly dito. Okay? Mag-read ng sector. Okay? So, uh, case in point is yung pag-read ng, ano, pag-read ng, ano, pag-read ng disk sector. Okay? Diba? Anong ginamit yung interrupt number doon? 13H. Diba? Okay? So, pag user mode ka, hindi mo pwede gawin yun. Pag nagrarun ka na sa loob ng Linux, ng Linux, hindi mo pwede i-call yung int 13, mag-error mag -error yun. Okay? Pero kung nasa bootloader ka pa lang, nasa privilege 0 ka pa, pwede mo pang gawin yun. Okay? You get the idea? So, that's what we mean by that. Okay? So, in user mode, the applications do not have full access to the hardware resources and sa kernel mode, the OS has access to full resources of the machine. So, yung bootloader, yung ginawa nyo, nandun kayo dun sa uh, kernel mode. Okay? Kasi nakapag-read kayo ng sector. Okay? Kasi nag-start pa lang yung machine eh. Ayun, nang booting yung machine. Okay? So, so sabihin rin, merong separation. Limited yung, ano, limited yung uh, user mode sa mga ginagawa niya. Wala siyang direct access dito. Now, what if kailangan nyo mag-read ng file? Okay? Paano niya gagawin yun? Okay? Di ba? Kung limited yung access ko sa pag dito, hindi ako pwede access sa user process, paano kung meron akong file dito na hello.txt? Tapos si process 3, nire-read niya pala yung hello.txt. Eh, hindi ko pwedeng basahin yung sector kung nasaan to using interrupt number 38H. How do I do that? So, they introduce yung abstraction ng system call. Okay? So, the idea of the system call is that uh, okay, it allows the kernel to carefully expose certain key pieces of functionality to user program such as accessing the file system, creating and destroying processes, yung fork, and communicating with other processes as well as allocating more memory. Okay? So, Yung pala yung purpose ng system call. Okay? So, kung si process 3 gusto niyang basahin si hello.txt na nasa disk, that process can do that directly. Okay? The process 3 has to issue a system call and that system call will be executed by the Operating system, do the read, return, and then once the read is done, inform the process tree that the read is done. You you get the idea, okay? So that is the purpose of the system call. You don't go directly. Instead, you go to the operating system. Let the operating system via the system call to do that because it is in kernel mode, it, has pre it can access privilege instructions and then read and then go back. You get the idea? In the case of open uh, read system calls, right? So how does that, the operating system uh, do that, right? So there is what you call a trap instruction, okay? So the trap instruction, okay, uh, Jump, basically, it does two things simultaneously. It jumps into the kernel and raise the privilege level to kernel mode. So, uh, let's say that process 3 is executing on the CPU. And somewhere along the way, process 3 executed the open system call. Open is a system call. So, what happens? So, this is like a function call, right? But it's actually a function call with more privilege, uh, with more capabilities, right? So what happens is this open system call actually has a trap instruction that 
transfers control to the kernel. Meaning, when you say transfer control to the kernel, the OS kernel is uh, enters this uh, enters the CPU. Okay? And then it is now in privilege in kernel mode and it can do the stuff like reading or opening the file. So what will happen is say if you if you use the open uh, so I need to open no? okay. so mawawala siyang wala mawawala siyang temporarily sa CPU si ano si P3. Ano na yung state ni ano ano nagre-read na siya. Ano na yung state ni Proxy P3? Black na siya, di ba? Magche-change pag nag-call siya ng system call na open tapos read. So halimbawa open hello.txt. Yung P3, okay? Ah ah nag-call na siya ng read. So after ng read, OS na yung bahala doon, may perform ng read. So, nasa blocking sta block state na siya, di ba? Remember, pag may perform ng IO yung process. So, block state na siya. And what will happen is, after the completion of the read, the next step will be the return from trap instruction. Right? So, uh, it will return to the uh, process PT. The operating system will return control of the CPU to the uh, process P3 and P3 is now running on the CPU. You get the idea? Okay, yeah. So, that's basically it. That's how the CPU performs uh, things, right? How it controls the operating system. Now, this is the timeline. That. So, at boot time, kernel mode, okay, yung sa bootloader, okay, uh, there is actually what you call a trap table, okay, a system called uh, is an interrupt vector table, okay, and you have a an address there for each, uh, pero yung x86 pero tinatawag na IVT, okay, interrupt vector table, okay, and it's actually just a lookup table of uh, a hash table of function, uh, key value pair, yung key ay yung interrupt number and value will be a pointer to a function. Okay? And after the OS boot, okay, the operating will run. So, uh, the usual stuff. Okay? And then, this will be a return from trap. Okay? And when you return from trap, it restores the registers from the kernel stack, move to user mode, and jump to main, and it's So, if you compare this, if you compare this, this is the direct execution, okay? Direct execution lang siya, walang control, okay? Para yung kanina yung parang direct direct siya, okay? Parang sa DOS, okay? But if you input, if you place in limited the direct execution, ito na ngayon yung nangyayari. So, yung mga introduce dito yung trap table, yung return from the trap, and yung trap in the table. So, whenever you call a system call, you are uh, the degeneration of trap instruction, and then the kernel is loaded, performs the function, and then goes back again. Okay, you get the idea? Okay. And uh, so, halimbawa, nag-trap in, into OS na siya. So, uh, the hardware uh, will save the registers to the kernel stack, right? And move to the kernel mode and jump into the trap handler, okay? And then, pag nag-jump uh, na siya, okay, kernel mode na siya, okay? And then, do the work of the syscall, yung read kanina, and then, uh, restore edge from the kernel stack, move to the user mode and jump to the program after trap and then tapos na. Okay? You get the idea? Now, what's the main difference uh, here? Okay? So, dito, kailang sabi natin, the system call or providing control would require the intervention of the hardware. Okay? So, as you see here, in addition to the OS and the user program, we have the hardware in the middle doing the uh, setting up and the switching. Okay? 
So, kung titingnan nyo, uh, I think you should bet, uh, you better read the book because uh, mas maganda yung explanation niya doon. But the idea is uh, like this. Okay? So, sabi natin uh, sa isang program, okay, meron tayong stock. Diba? Okay? Now, sa process scheduling, sa operating system, Uh, ito yung pinatawag na user stock. Okay. Ibig sabihin, yung user stock, this is internal to process 3. Okay. Kung baga siya lang yung gumagamit yan. Okay. Now, dito sa ano, limited direct execution, you will see here a kernel stock. Okay. So, yung kernel stock na yan is different from the user, user stock. Yung kernel stack is used to switch from one process to another. Kaya nandun yung sa gitna. So, mapansin nyo, so yung OS, uh, OS kernel mode, uh, let's say nag-ano ka, nag, uh, ito yung part na nag-call ka ng exec VE. Okay? So, tapos na yung exec VE. Return from trap ka na. Okay? So, ano ba doon niya? Return from trap. So, it will restore the register from the kernel stack, move to user mode, and jump to the main of P3. Why you get the idea? So, itong point na ito yung nag-exec VE. Ito yung part na nag-jump na siya sa, ano, sa, 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 laman ng, sa main ng P3. Okay? And then, uh, ito naman, itong trap, ano kaya ito? Anong instruction to? Basic example natin. Ito yung, anong system call to? Ito yung, Read. Okay? So, kanina, uh, sana nasundan nyo, kanina si P3 wala pa sa memory. Okay? So, nag-call ng exec, nandun na siya. Ito na yun. Tapos si P3 nag-read. So, nag-read siya, ito yung part na yun. Okay? So, ang mangyayari, si hardware, isi-save niya yung registers to the kernel stack. Ano yung, ano, ano yung Register ni no? Register ni P3. Okay? Register ni P3 ang save niya. Tapos, mag-move na siya sa kernel mode. Okay? And then, jump to the handler na mag-re-read nung, ano, nung file. And then, uh, pagkatapos nun, return from trap. Ano itong return from trap? Ano yung nag-cost nito? Ito yung, ito yung read. Diba? Babalik na ngayon siya. Tapos, Ibabalik na yung register uh, sa kayong yung registers na sinave kanina. Okay? And then control now will go to the uh, process P3. You get the idea? So that's the essence of it all. Okay? So yan yung mechanism kung paano nag-schedule, uh, paano naglilipat nila. So ang tawag doon sa paglipat ng stock Okay, from one process to another, yung kernel stack ay context switch. Okay, yung pag-save ng ano, context switch, yung pag-save ng register sa kernel stack ng mga processes para makakabalik siya after ng system call. Okay, you get the idea? Okay. So, the next question is, how does uh, the processes switch between processes? So, so, kanina, pinakita lang natin kung paano nagsiswitch si process P3 to the OS kernel. Okay? So, kernel mode to user mode. Now, paano ginagawa ito? Okay? Uh, the first approach is waiting for system calls. So, parang ang sinasabi, ang sinasabi lang dito sa so first approach is uh, di ba si P3 meron na siyang ano? Meron na siyang siya na yung gumagamit ng CPU. Siya na yung CPU. Ang gagawin niya is uh, gagamit siya ng system call para i-inform na kumbaga tinatrust tapos na ako. Okay? Uh, ikaw na. Okay? Uh, kumbaga mabait yung ano yung process na yun. Sabihin niya dun sa OS oh, tapos na ako. So meron merong system call na yield. Okay? So pag tapos na siya the OS will decide to do some other task. Okay? application also transfer control to the OS when they do something illegal. So, dalawa yung, ano, dalawa yung, dalawa yung pag-cooperative, okay? Ang gagawin niya is, 
Merong system call, yield ang tawag, or magkakaroon ng errors, like divide by zero, which is unsupported. So, pag after the pangyayari yan, yung control will be transferred to the kernel. Okay? So, ganun yung mangyayari. Okay? So, early versions of Mac basically use this uh, machine. However, hindi naman perfect yung behavior ng mga programs. May mga bugs yan. Okay? So, as I was mentioning a while ago, they might get stuck in, the, in an infinite loop. So, I'm not choice ka na ngayon kasi si CP, COS, hindi na makakabalik dito. Ano na solution mo? Reboot mo na lang. Okay? Now, the other approach is yung non-cooperative, yung timer interrupt. Okay? So, most operating system implement this timer interrupt. Okay? Ano yung ginagawa ng timer interrupt? Okay? Uh, during the boot sequence, the OS starts a timer. Okay? And the timer raises an interrupt ev uh, every so many milliseconds. When the interrupt is raised, the current running process is halted, safe enough state of the program, and a pre-configured interrupt handler in the OS runs. Okay? So, it is the timer interrupt that gives the OS the ability to run again on a CPU. Okay? Paano nangyayari yan? Okay? So, sabi mo kanina, during the boot process, merong ano, merong tinatawag na interrupt vector table. Okay? So, sa interrupt vector table, may mga number yan. Bisa 0, 1, 2, uh, 3, uh, uh, I think it's up to 255. Okay? So, these are called the interrupt lines. Okay? So, yung interrupt lines, parang ang ginagawa niya is kahit ano pa yung ginagawa, ano pa yung ine-execute ng processor na instruction, once na na-trigger yung interrupt line na yun, kailangan mag-stop yung execution na yun, tapos pupunta sa isang hunter. Ito actually ay pointer to functions. So let's uh, take a look at how this how how will this work in the uh, in this example, no? So CP3 nag-execute siya, right? So sabihin natin CP3 will require uh, 4000 milliseconds. Estimate lang. CP3 will take about 4000 milliseconds para matapos, okay? So syempre nag-execute na siya diyan starting at time 0, time 1. Pero, let's say we've configured the timer interrupt to, to generate the interrupt every 300 milliseconds. Okay? So, ang mangyayari ganito? So, that starts sa 0 milliseconds si P3 ng execution. Okay? Pagdating sa 300 milliseconds ng execution ni ano, uh, not necessarily uh, execution ni ano, ni Uh, ni P3. Sabihin natin, 400 milliseconds siya. Ito pala, uh, start, kung baga mag-tick na siya sa start pa lang, magka-count na siya. 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, tapos, pag na-reach niya yung 300 milliseconds, ang mangyayari is, kung ano man yung nag-execute dito, may interrupt siya. Okay? And what happens is, yung timer interrupt, merong nagpo-point siya Di ba pointer to function to, no? Nag-point siya sa isa sa mga operations ng kernel. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, habang nag-execute si P3, say, 4,000 milliseconds siya, pag na-trigger yung uh, interrupt after every 300 milliseconds, eventually, matatanggal si P3, si OS yung sisingit. Nasasundan niyo ba yung logic nun? So, kailan mo trigger siya? So, 300 milliseconds, pupunta dito, uh, uh, lilipat yung control sa kernel. After, after a while, sa 600 uh, milliseconds, babalik ulit siya dito. So, after a while, 900 milliseconds, babalik siya. You get the idea? So, habang nag-execute si P3, kahit 4,000 milliseconds siya, pag nag-tick yung 900, uh, yung every 300 milliseconds nangyari yun, matatransfer yung control lagi doon sa interrupt handler na na-denify ng operating system. 
Okay, get the idea? So, hindi talaga nawawala ng control yung operating system kasi ito, nangyayari to at the hardware level. You get the idea? So, yung case na mawala yung ano, yung uh, mawala yung control sa OS ay hindi mangyayari. Okay? Okay. So, uh, Ang tawag doon sa paglipat, sabi ko kanina ay yung context switch. So, sinisave mo yung uh, register sa kernel stock. Okay? So, uh, saving and restoring context. So, it's actually the scheduler uh, uh, who makes the decision whether to continue running the current process or switch to a different one. Okay? So, how do we illustrate this? Okay? So, in the memory, at this point in time, meron tayong P1, P2, P3. Okay? So, si P3 currently nage-execute sa CPU. Okay? Tapos, at the 900 uh, milliseconds, lilipat dito. Di ba? Tama ba? Do you agree? Okay, lilipat dito. Now, paglipat dito, so, ma uh, so mawawala siya, mawawala siya dyan, at currently, itong function na to, yung mage-execute dyan. Okay? Habang nage-execute siya, this handler may decide Iraran ko pa ba ito? Ah, ibabalik ko ba sa kanya yung CPU or pipili ako ng iba para ilipat ko sa kanila yung CPU? You get the idea? So, yun yung, kumbaga, yung pag-decide kung kailan gagawin yung pag-decide kung sino yung next process na magraran sa CPU will be, uh, will happen pag in-execute na yung interrupt handler for the timer interrupt. You get the idea? So, that's a very important consideration in uh, the design of an operating system. So, halimbawa, at 900 milliseconds, nag-execute to, nag-decide siya, tigil na muna natin si P3. Kanina pa yan tumatakbo. Okay? Magko-context switch tayo, si P1 ang ilalagay natin sa CPU. Okay? Paano gagawin yung context switch? Right? Ang gagawin lang is, syempre, i-restore -re lang yung mga registers sa kernel stock. Kung baga, uh, isi-set yung, uh, yung babalikan after ng system call doon sa register na sinave sa kernel stock kanina regarding P1. You get the idea? So, yung context switching basically is restoring and uh, saving the contents of the registers to the kernel stack. Okay? So, that's a very important concept. Okay? So, how do you implement the context switch? Uh, it's a low-level piece of assembly code. Basically, you just save the state of the registers, the process. Basically, nandun yung mga values nun. Okay? And then, the kernel stack pointer. Okay? And then, you restore uh, for the suit to be executing process from its kernel stack. She's the kernel stack for the soon to be executing process. Nasusundan niyo ba yung, yung mechanism natin? Okay. So that's an interesting... Uh, uh, okay. So let's have this... Uh, so let's have this uh, timeline. Okay. Kung paano gumag gumagana yung ano, uh, with the in with timer interrupt. Okay. So initialize the trap table. This is the trap table. May mga, halimbawa, dati, yung 32-bit na Linux, hinuhook nila yung uh, ATH, interim number ATH. Ibig sabihin, every time na 900 milliseconds, every time na nagkaroon ng, ano, ng uh, tick, uh, pwede siyang pumunta dito sa kernel. Tapos kung explicitly magkakall ka ng isang system call sa Linux, i-issue mo yung ATH. So, essentially, sa, sa x86, yung trap instruction na sinasabi ko kanina is the int instruction. Okay? Interrupt instruction. Okay? Remember that. Yung trap instruction, the generic term, pagdating sa x86, ang tawag doon ay int. Okay? int. Tandaan nyo yan. Int instruction. Okay? So, you initialize the trap table. So, remember the address of uh, the system code handler, the timer handler. So, ito yung sa ano, sa sa Linux dati, syscall na kasi na yun pag 64-bit eh. So, int 80H, yan yung syscall handler. Tapos, I think it's 1C. 
uh, I forgot the interrupt number for the clock, for the timer interrupt. I don't know if it's 1C, okay? Forgot. So, uh, initialize siya sa hardware, and then you start the interrupt timer. So, mag-start na yung interrupt timer. I'll show you the code later. Uh, and then, uh, the OS, uh, so process A, uh, so nagdaran sa process A, right? So, let's say process one is running, and then the timer interrupts. At time 600, the timer interrupts. So, ano gagawin? Save the register of P1 to the kernel stack of P1. Okay? Then, move to the kernel mode. Okay? Move to the kernel mode. Okay? And then, jump to the handler. Okay? So, you jump to the handler. And then, you handle the trap. So, ito yung trap. Okay? Call the switch routine. Okay? Which uh, saves the... Uh, which actually performs the context switch. Okay? Save... Uh, so, di ba sabi yung kanina, at this point, mag-de-decide na siya ngayon kung papalitan niya si process P1. Okay? So, sabi dito, save registers of uh, A save mo si P1, okay? Restore, uh, limbawa si P2 naman yan, restore the registers of uh, D from process, process, uh, PCD to B, and then switch the kernel stack to uh, the kernel stack of B, okay? And then return from trap, and then ito na yung mangyayari sa the hardware, okay? Ito software, as a OS to, may PCB ka, PCB yung ginamanipulate ko dito, okay? And then, you initiate yung IRET. Actually, yung return from trap, ang, ang instruction dyan sa x86 ay IRET. Okay? Interrupt return, yun yung return from trap, okay? And then, hardware na ulit yung mag-execute, okay? So, mawawala na siya dyan, and then, eventually, process din na ang control dito. Okay, you get the idea? Okay. So, this is the example code for uh, the context switch for the XB6 OS. So, notice na uh, uh, ATNT syntax, okay? So, you put all pointer into the AX, okay? So, this is uh, the stack pointer, okay? Save that, and then save the old IP by popping it, okay? And then you save the other registers, okay? And then, this is how you load the new registers, okay? And then, uh, you read, okay? That's the context switch, okay? Do you, fo do you follow? So that's uh, all about uh, context switching. But I hope you read the, you're reading the book, okay? Because, uh, Ito ang, ang contribution ko lang basically is the illustrations, okay? But the things uh, there are from the book. So, itong illustration na nandang nagsasabi kung paano siya gumagana. Kaya they're knowing siya. Okay? So, that will be all for today. Uh, we'll continue next meeting about uh, the next topic. Okay? So, thank you. Uh, please submit your quiz results.